Metacosis Perfectionis once again, continuing our biology playlist. In the last videos, we talked about the anatomy of the respiratory system, the mechanics of inhalation and exhalation, lung volumes, capacity, spirometry, pulmonary function test. We even talked about respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, and the acid-base stuff. Today, we'll talk about what happens to your body when you live on top of a mountain. Now, let's get started. Please watch these videos in order. Let's go. We've talked about this before, so let's review. The fraction of oxygen in the atmosphere is FiO2. When it enters your lungs, oxygen is now called PaO2, A for alveolar. When it jumps on the blood, in the arterial blood, it's called P small AO2, A for arterial. When it jumps on the hemoglobin, it is SaO2, S for saturation. And then the tissue is going to take oxygen and release carbon dioxide. This is metabolism or cellular respiration. Carbon dioxide is going to jump on the hemoglobin. This is called carbaminohemoglobin. Veins have deoxygenated blood and a very teeny tiny amount of oxygen called PVO2. And then you exhale it. Atmospheric pressure. What is it? Imagine that you're standing here. On top of your head, there is a column of air from here until the end of the atmosphere. The weight of this air column on top of your head is called the atmospheric pressure. If I leave here and I go on top of a mountain, I'm closer to the end of the atmosphere, leaving a shorter column of air with lower weight and therefore lower pressure. And that's why when you go up on a mountain, air pressure goes down. Pressure equals force over area. At sea level, there is more air above you, therefore more force. But on top of a mountain, there is less force and therefore lower pressure. At sea level, what's the atmospheric pressure? 760 millimeters of mercury. And since this is the same as the atmospheric pressure, we call this 1 atm. So 1 atm equals 760 tor or 760 millimeters of mercury. This is at sea level. But if you go up a mountain, this will go down, of course. So what happened when metacosis was standing here at sea level versus when metacosis went up there? At sea level, there is your 760 millimeters of mercury atmospheric pressure or air pressure. When I went on top of a mountain, of course, the atmospheric pressure went down, say 580, for example. But when I was down here, oxygen constituted 21% of the atmospheric air, and this did not change when I went on top of a mountain. This is very important. If IO2 does not change, whether you're here or here, doesn't matter. What does change is the P big AO2, which is in your alveoli, because this basically equals this crazy equation, but forget all of this, forget this, okay? Forget this and forget this. Let's focus on this and this. Now let's write it in a very simplistic manner. PAO2 equals pressure of the atmosphere or the barometric pressure, which is just atmospheric pressure, multiplied by FiO2, which is the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere. The percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere did not change. However, atmospheric pressure at sea level is higher than that on top of a mountain. And that's why PaO2 is higher here than here. Put differently, if I decide to live on top of a mountain, if IO2 is not going to change, PB, or the atmospheric pressure, will go down, and therefore PaO2 is going to go down. Translation, the pressure of oxygen in my alveoli has dropped. That's not cool, because this can lead to hypoxia. Hypo means low, oxia means oxygen. There is less oxygen in my body. Sea level versus mountain top. What's happening here? Same FiO2 does not change. Higher atmospheric pressure at sea level versus mountain top and therefore higher PaO2 here than here. I went to the top of the mountain. This is high altitude which decreased my PaO2 in my alveoli which decreased my P small AO2 in my arterial blood. This is called hypoxemia. 
oh, this is dangerous because we need to give oxygen to tissue. Well, if we are not getting enough oxygen, at least we can increase the number of red blood cells to try to carry and squeeze by every single drop of oxygen available. Try to deliver as much oxygen as we can because we are in trouble here. So, long term, you will have more red blood cells when you live on top of a mountain. We call this polycythemia or erythrocytosis. This is the opposite of anemia. Next, since I have less oxygen now, well, let me try to breathe more. <sighs> I will increase my respiratory rate. I will hyperventilate, therefore carbon dioxide is gonna decrease because I'm washing out my carbon dioxide. <sighs> when carbon dioxide decreases, this is respiratory alkalosis. Moreover, when I have hypoxia in the lungs, the part of the lung that is hypoxic will just shut down, vasoconstriction, to leave the normal parts of the lungs with as much oxygen as possible. In other words, reallocation of scarce resources. This is what economics is all about. When you vasoconstrict, you will decrease the surface area in the vessel. And of course, when area goes down, pressure goes up. This is called increased hydrostatic pressure, which can lead to pulmonary edema. Basically, you're drowning in your own water. That was deep. When you have pulmonary edema, you will cough frothy pink sputum. Why frothy? Because the lung has air. Why pink? Because the lung has blood vessels. When you live on top of a mountain for a long period of time, you will have more red blood cells. We call this polycythemia. What type of polycythemia? Is it relative? No, it's not fake. It's actually true. I have more red blood cells in absolute term, not just relative to plasma. Therefore, we call this absolute polycythemia. Is it primary like a cancer? No, it's not a cancer. It is secondary. It's a reaction. It's a response to the hypoxia. Okay. Is this an appropriate response or inappropriate response? It is appropriate response to hypoxia. So when you go on top of a mountain, erythropoietin will go up. Who secretes this doofus? The kidney. Apo will leave the kidney, will go to the blood, will reach the bone marrow, will knock on the door of the bone marrow. Hey doofus, make some more red blood cells. We're starving for oxygen right here. When you live on top of a mountain for a long period of time, you will make more red blood cells called polycythemia. Also, you will increase new blood vessel formation. So I'll make more red blood cells and more blood vessels called neovascularization, new blood vessel formation. Come on, people, these videos are beautiful. Please buy me a coffee. And as the saying goes, one cup of coffee a day keeps debt collectors at bay. I don't know what the flip I'm saying. Anyways, go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. Now, the oxygen dissociation curve. I have a separate video about this topic. Here is the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. You have PaO2 on the x-axis, SaO2 on the y-axis. This is the oxygen that's floating freely in the blood. This is oxygen on top of the hemoglobin. What's happening at the lungs? Well, the lung is full of oxygen if you're talking about normal conditions. Yeah, that's why PaO2 is not low. It is super duper high right here. Okay. What's the hemoglobin saturation? Well, the hemoglobin is super duper saturated with oxygen because we have tons of oxygen in the lung. Therefore, the blood that is close by the lungs will have tons of oxygen saturation. That's easy. So, at the level of the lung, blood is getting oxygenated. Oxygen is jumping on the hemoglobin. We call this phenomena loading. The hemoglobin is getting loaded with oxygen. Conversely, if you're talking about the peripheral tissue, well, as you see here, PaO2 is low, SaO2 is also low. Because this is unloading, the oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin and going to the tissue. This black curve is the normal curve. We can shift it to the right, we can shift it to the left. Here is an example of a shift to the right. As we see, we went from black to blue, it's a shift to the right. So, to understand what happens, we'll take the same point on the x-axis and go up until we intersect with the new curve that's shifted to the right and until we intersect with the old curve. What happened here when it comes to the SAO2? The new curve has a lower SO2 than the old curve. Translation. 
when you shift the curve to the right, oxygen saturation decreases, which means oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin and jumping on the tissue. Therefore, oxygen is being given to the tissue. Oxygen is released from the hemoglobin and is going to the tissue. And in literature, the right hand symbolizes giving. We are giving oxygen to the tissue. But when you shift the curve to the left, so the black one is the original one, and the red one is the one shifted to the left. Take the same point from the x-axis and go upwards. Intersect with the original one, intersect with the one shifted to the left. As you see, when you shift to the left, you increase the SAO2. Translation, when you shift to the left, there is more oxygen in the hemoglobin, which means more loading, less unloading. Oxygen is going to the hemoglobin and therefore away from the tissue. Thus, with left shift, the tissue is left behind. The shifters. These are the factors that help you shift to the right. And these are the factors that help you shift to the left. The shifters to the right are increase carbon dioxide, increase hydrogen alcohol, increase temperature, increase 2 3 BPG, increase altitude. The shifters to the left are the opposite. Decrease carbon dioxide, decrease hydrogen ion concentration, decrease temperature, decrease 2 3 BPG, but instead of low altitude, we just say hemoglobin F and met hemoglobin. This is the fetal hemoglobin. This is a disease. Unfortunately, many students think that some patients have right shift, other patients have left shift, when in fact, the same person can have right and left shift in different parts of the body, depending on the demand for oxygen. For example, metacosis is here. Look at my shredded physique. My erectus abdominis is on fleek. If I'm exercising my right arm while relaxing my left arm, who do you think needs more oxygen? Well, the right arm needs more oxygen. Therefore, the hemoglobin in the right arm will give the oxygen to the tissue so that the tissue can exercise. But the hemoglobin in the left arm will not give oxygen to the tissue. Oxygen will remain on the hemoglobin more loading and less unloading. But how did the hemoglobin here knew to unload? And how did the hemoglobin here know to load? Well, because these factors happened here and these factors happened here. Wow, explain it to me, metacosis. When you're exercising your right arm, this is metabolism, right? Yeah, therefore, you're utilizing oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. So this is factor one. Carbon dioxide is an acid. It will raise the hydrogen ion concentration, causing acidosis. This right arm is exercising like crazy, raising its temperature. And when you are metabolizing, there is too much glycolysis going on, releasing 2,3-BPG bisphosphoglycerate. Some people write it BPG, some people write it DPG. I don't care. All of this is happening in the right arm, with the exception of high altitude. And therefore, hemoglobin in the right arm is shifting to the right and giving the oxygen to the tissue, which needs it. Conversely, hemoglobin in the left arm is preserving the oxygen to himself so that we can wait until we can give it to the right arm because the right arm needs more. How do the hemoglobin here know? We have low CO2, low hydrogen ion, low temperature, low 2, 3 BPG relative to the right arm. And with left shift, the tissue of the left arm is left behind. Economics is the study of the use of scarce resources, oxygen, that has alternative uses, right versus left arm. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. High altitude causes hypoxia, hypoxemia, which causes hypoxia, increased EPO and secondary polycythemia. It causes hyperventilation. It can cause some head swelling and headache, pulmonary edema and cerebral edema, which can cause headache. And this is the most important slide in the entire stinking video. On the mountain top, there is hypoxemia, which means low P, small a, O2, this causes hypoxia, which means just low oxygen in your body. Hypo, low, oxy, oxygen. All right, when I have low oxygen in my body, I will release more EPO from the kidney to increase formation and release of red blood cells from the bone marrow, erythropoiesis, causing secondary polycythemia. 
Polycythemia is the opposite of anemia. Polycythemia has increased red blood cell count, increased hemoglobin, and increased hematocrit. High altitude shifts the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right. You're giving oxygen to the tissue. More unloading, oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin. More dissociation, oxygen is dissociated from the hemoglobin. Less binding of hemoglobin to oxygen, less affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen. All of these are synonymous. High altitude, hypoxia, let me hyperventilate in response. This will raise your respiratory rate, drop your carbon dioxide, and when you're losing the acid, you get respiratory alkalosis. I have like 1,000 videos on YouTube, plus more premium courses on my website, such as my antibiotics course, my kidney physiology course, and my cardiac pharmacology course. Go to medicosisperfectionedicine.com. Use promo code New Year Learning for a 60% discount. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.